the Italiano versus all the rest of the world all comers start their green flag lap then and it is Peter Chalice in number 11 the Porsche who starts on the front row we are sadly missing the Ferrari Peter Smith which was the start of round one earlier this afternoon but alongside or at least due to be alongside was Peter Smith in number five we're missing Smith we're also missing Vincent Dubois in the Spire but on row two we'll sit Phil Nib in the Janetta G50 row three Rob Spencer Rob has been incredibly busy through the course of the weekend winning two races in the MG car club events yesterday turning that into another performance a strong performance again today and alongside him will be number 52 Clive Hainsford in the Mazda RX-8 row four sees Pete Samuels in the MG Carsten Muller should be there in the Alfa Romeo Thomas Wake, Graham Charman and Matt Wilton will make out the grid looks like Ben Sharrick has joined the field so Ben Sharrick in the Alfa Romeo Mito has joined the pack to the rear of the field so the Alfa Romeo Mito of Ben Sharrick had ish ECU issues earlier in the season is back out at the rear of the field rolling start for the last race of the day at the fourth festival Italia Matt you might have to jump in with the podium when you get a chance during this race but we're about to go with the last race of the day at festival Italia at Brands Hatch can Chalice convert the pole position start into victory he leads them away off the line but it looks like the Ginetta of Phil Nibs going to try and settle into second place. It does. It's Porsche from Ginetta. So the rest of the world cars are going well at the front of the field. Rob Spencer in the MG settles into third position. Fourth is the Clive Hainsford Mazda RX-8. But where are the Italian cars in this one? Because they all seem to have fallen towards the rear of the pack. It's the rest of the world runners which are at the head of the field. One, two, three, four, five. All from the rest of the world. Led by the... Porsche, the Arrow Pack sponsored Porsche, of Peter Chalice, the former Nissan Primera racer who won the Euro Saloon Championship a few years ago. He leads the field. Clive Hansford's had a bit of smoke going from the back of the Mazda RX-8 as the Alphas are at the rear of the field. So it's the rest of the world versus the Italian runners and it is those Italian machines that are at the back of the pack. Ben Sharrick, then there's Thomas Waite and also Carsten Muller all at the rear of the field but the battle for top spot is starting to heat up because Peter Chalice in the Porsche, the rear bumper is now being warmed up by the Ginetta the Golf livery Ginetta of Rochester's Phil Nim, he is closing and closing but look out for the 1970s MG at the third place as well, the leaders trip over each other, there's contact up at Drew Eady. they go side by side through the hairpin almost, there's bumper to bumper contact as they turn through the right hander but it's Chalice into the Savolta de Glam Hill they go two by two and then there's First and second positions all both tripping over each other with in hot pursuit Rob Spencer, number 901, the Martini MG, is the iconic Italian livery, the Martini rally style livery on the side of the MG in third place. So three car train for the lead. We're missing sadly the Ferrari of Peter Smith. Maybe he couldn't get the car ready and turned around after its number of outings and suddenly the front bodywork starts to come up, did it there on the Ginetta? I think after the contact at Druidi bodywork started to come loose on the Phil Nib Janetta and it's suddenly slowing. I think after the contact at Druidi, Nib's car is seriously hurt now and he lost a place to the hard charging Rob Spencer in number 901. Was it just a missed gear or is there damage on the Janetta G50 which was in second place is now in third and is falling down the order. You can see the bodywork still slightly out of shape on the third place car. Chalice through Valiente de Glande John into Parabolico de McLaren and without the Ferrari to play with, without the Ginetta hounding him in his mirrors, it looks like Peter Chalice is going to convert a front row start into victory here. We've got 12 minutes left to run of this 15 minute encounter. The MGB of Rob Spencer, the local man who lives a mile or so from the circuit, is in second position. Chalice in front on his own and now we have a pit entry visitor and a shame to say that Phil Nib has called it a day in the Ginetta. After that contact with Chalice up at Druidi, that has ended his day and the Rochester man pulls into the pit lane at his local circuit. Nib is out of this one, but out front that's left Chalice all alone. The Porsche racer's got a lonely time at the Brands Agini circuit now. If Rob Spencer going to do anything about it, he needs to start pressurising him soon because that Porsche is going to be up the road you can blink I'm sure looks like Chalice extending that lead that close little tussle over third place is the one to keep an eye on it's the National Hot Rod star Clive Hainsworth who had the mini National Hot Rods on the ovals in the previous years he's been hounded by Pete Samuels from 
started on row four, a row further back than Hayden and Hansen did, but the bright orange MG is starting to pressurise the flame-spitting Mazda RX-8. The RX-8 spits flames through the first turn at Kalina de Paddock, going up Kalina de Halewood. The MG is trying everything to make a move on the Mazda, can't get it done on the entry point to Drew Eady, tries the high and wide line around the outside, can't do it there, spitting flames into the front grill of the MG is the Mazda RX-8 as it breaks for Graham Hill Bend. This is the interesting battle on circuit over third place. Further back, we've got Phil Nibs made his way back out onto circuit. The team have put the bodywork back into shape and some sort of order, and Nib is back out on track. But this tussle over third place is still the one to keep an eye on. It's the flames pour out of the back of the Mazda RX-8 of Hainsford with Samuel still in hot pursuit. Nib back out on circuit, but he's tussling at least a lap down now. He's two laps down, in fact. Poor old Nib lost a, a couple of laps in the pit lane. And it's a real shame that that contact of Druini stopped his charge. We've had 11 qualifiers in this one. We're down to eight starters in race two. So the Caterham, which had entered the race earlier this morning, uh, into qualifying, sadly didn't make it at all out for any of the races. So that's hurt the numbers somewhat. But a real shame that we haven't seen Peter Smith make it out for this Italiano versus rest of the world scrap which as it stands is going the way of the rest of the world there's no stopping between Chalice, Spencer, Hansford, Samuels the first Italian car is Ben Sharrick in the Alfa Romeo Mito one of the rarest motorsport cars you'll see out there because the Mito is probably only one of a handful in motorsport in production there's the two made for the European Rally Cross Championship a few years ago they're hardly ever driven no other Mito has been driven in British race circuits at all. So it's been a real step into the unknown for Ben Sharrick. The Scottish flag emblazoned across the roof as the Alpha Mito front-wheel drive car makes its way through Valiante de Glande, John, Parabolico de McLaren and into La Rugia. Out of Curva Clark he'll go, but the Alfa Romeo Mito, best of the Italians, but only in fifth position. Muller's in sixth, Wait seventh and Nib two laps down in eighth place. This battle over third place continuing to draw the eye. It's Samuels versus Hansford. They go through the left-hander at Valiante de Grande. John breaking for Naradua and out of Curva Clark. The two of them still together as they make their way down Curva Clark and out of the Retifilo Brabham they go. Is Samuel still on the rear bumper of Hansford? It's the Mazda versus the MG. This is what MSVR All Comers races are all about. You wouldn't put these two cars together in almost any other championship. It really is open to, to anything. And it's the Mazda of Clive Hansford which is just about keeping hold of third place. Matt, I can hear you down at the podium. Looks like the, the podium from the Pirelli Ferrari Formula Classic may yeah. be ready to go. Yeah, we've got 13 drivers here.
that's all we have time for. We haven't really got a word with the top three because we've got a race going on. So Dan, I'll hand straight back to you. Yeah, thanks very much about that. He's an incredibly busy podium down there for the Pirelli Ferrari Formula Classic and a well-deserved driver of the day award for Tim Mogridge with one of the best moves you'll see of Brands Hatch around the outside of Druidi, aka Druids for any other meeting, but an excellent move by Mogridge around the outside of the tight right hand and pulling it off down into Graham Hill Bend. Back to the action in the Italiano versus rest of the world all comers and as expected it is still Pink Chalice at the head of the field. 12 seconds, 12.9, 13 seconds really away from Rob Spencer in the MG. Third place after what was a very close tussle suddenly the gap opened up and Hansford, Clive Hansford in the Manchester RX-8 was able to build enough of a buffer over the MG of Pete Samuels so Pete Samuels has fallen to a lowly fourth place and now that Hansford has disposed of Samuels he's now not more up with the MGB hassling with his mirrors he's now trying very hard indeed to catch down another MGB which is second place man in the form of the Spencer machine, the Martini livery MG. So if he can catch him down, Rob Spencer in number 901 will start to feel pressure from the Mazda RX-8. The Alfa Romeos further back, Ben Sharrick still leading them. Ni um, the Nib machine's made his way, uh, Phil Nibs made his way back into some sort of contention. He visited the pits twice, but is now fifth overall. Ben Sharrick and Carsten Muller are still the leading alphas but it really has been all about the rest of the world cars here three and a half minutes left to go and it is the German Porsche of the Chalice which is just extending the lead lap by lap a real shame that we lost um, Phil Nib had to dive into the pit lane after contact at Druidi and we didn't see the starting Pete Smith because at the three car battle in the earlier race Sadly, we only got one really left in any sort, in any form of contention. Yeah, it was fantastic, wasn't it? Race one with the, the three sports cars towards the head. Peter Smith did sound the podium would be back out for this one, but he obviously lied to us. He wanted to uh, dash off early, but he's had some hard racing to do. And as you said, yeah, Phil never looked like he had some uh, damage on the left front. I think the, the um, kind of front there had come off, so they had to strap that back down. But yeah, it's a shame because Phil Nib was uh, giving him a good run, Peter Chalice, and also Rob Spencer, wasn't he? He was giving a, a good run for first and second. He's up there into second place now, so after his uh, good races yesterday. It looks like he's going to finish the weekend on a high with a second place as it stands as uh, Peter Chalice now goes through onto lap number 15 of this race, looking very comfortable at the minute. I think it's only fair, though, because the, the Italians won it in race one, so it's exactly fair the rest of them are taking race two. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's what the is about. And then, uh, Chalice has deserved a, a win, I'd say, after his strong showing in that opening race in the form of the San Primera race, and now enjoying the time behind the wheel of a Porsche, and stretch his legs down into Savolta de Graham Hill. We've got just two minutes left of competitive race action at Festival Italia and we're enjoying some cracking battles through, the, not just for the overall race wins, but for class victories in the Alfa Romeos, in the Ferraris, in the all cars as well. It really has been some, some close racing throughout and not forgetting the F1 demos where we saw a real healthier grid of F1 demos. She's out for the second demo later in the afternoon. The rain didn't really help the first one, but we did see a lot more come out for second demo which was a, a really good sight around the, the fourth festival Italia. Yeah it certainly was all of the uh, eight F1 and single seaters we've had here today have uh, made it out at some point towards the end of the day which is fantastic as, as Dan said. Ben Sherrick not sounding too good in this no. race unfortunately and it sounds a bit ropey doesn't it? Uh, not firing on what it should be I don't think so it's, it's probably going to trundle around and just about make it to the, the end of the race which now only has uh, about 90 seconds to go so and, it's... Uh, and win the, Ita the Italian part of the <laughs> race to Ben Sherrick so I think we did have two podiums last time as well, didn't we? We did, yeah. So Ben Sherrick, if you can get the, the six-sounding Mito to the flag, looks to be on course for the Italian class win. He certainly does indeed, so if he can just get it round as best he can, if he's only losing two, three seconds a lap, he, he may just be OK, to be fair. He's got to get uh, through this lap and possibly one more as uh, Clive Hainsford comes onto the back straight. Phil Nib is up behind him, although that is not a position in terms of uh, position on track because Phil Nib's uh, coming laps down at the minute, unfortunately. So Clive Hainsford will just let him go uh, with no real struggle there. The man who sits in third place at the minute and will also finish third within the uh, rest of the world class as well. So he's doing a uh, good job at the minute as they come back onto the start-finish line. Peter Chalice has gone through and he is now, I think, yeah, onto his last lap. Yeah, Chalice has one more tour of the Indy circuit to complete and barring any dramas, the Porsche will take the win. He's out of Svolta de Graham Hill and 
Chalice with a 15 second lead over Rob Spencer, who's had a, a busy weekend. He'll be looking forward to a, a relaxing Monday or Rob after a busy qualifying session and two races yesterday at the 750 Motor Club event, which was okay. a nice bit of build up to the Festival Italia with a, a couple of competitors competing in both events, and one of them was that man Rob Spencer in second position. But it is Chalice who comes across the line to take victory in the Italiano versus rest of the world all comers. Pete Chalice completes 17 laps with a best time of 52.420. Chalice scores the win and it will be after a busy weekend. Rob Spencer hand out the window, delighted to take second position in the rest of the world category. Hansford will come through to third. The flame spitting Mazda worked very hard by the bright orange MG of Pete Samuels who comes across the line now to score fourth. We should then see the Phil Nib machine which has made its way back out onto circuit in, after a visit to the pit where is Phil Nib should hopefully come through into fifth position he has Nib's taken the flag in fifth place Wait will take sixth and that takes the Italian win away from Ben Sharrick right at the flag Ben Sharrick drops the seventh in a car which didn't sound too healthy and the final finisher Carsten Muller is it's all Alfa Romeo's in the Italian finishing position 6th, 7th and 8th but no stopping Pete Chalice in number 11. No, definitely not. So Peter Chalice is the man who takes the final win of the weekend here at Brands Hatch in the Italiano versus uh, rest of the world all comers. Does it by just over uh, 15 seconds by a very delighted and local man, the man from uh, Horton Kirby. Uh, Rob Spencer will join down on the podium very shortly along with Clive Hainsford who finishes third overall and third in the rest of the world. Top three into the Italiano. Part of the race was uh, Tom Waite on his first ever weekend of racing. He's got now a trophy for podium early on and a trophy now for a win. So I'm, I'm sure he's going to be absolutely delighted with that. And, uh, all the family that are with him today as well will be uh, pretty happy. Second place into the Italiano part of the race was Ben Sharrick. Just lost down on the final corner of that last lap. He just couldn't quite defend with that uh, uh, ailing car, unfortunately. And then Carsten Muller comes through for his second podium of the day as well. So brilliant stuff there from all involved in the Italiano versus the rest of the world. All comers, uh, they'll come straight down the pit lane. So it should be a pretty quick podium because uh, they're all pretty much with us. And uh, we'll rattle through that and get done before uh, the end of the day. And we'll bring uh, a close down on this uh, Festival Italia, the, the fourth one. It's been a great day. It was a little bit hampered by the weather uh, this morning, but everyone stayed with us, which is fantastic to see. You all stood your, your ground in the, the great British weather and held on for what hopefully you've enjoyed in terms of the racing and, of course, everything else that's happened off the track as well, which has been put on by MSV. Brands Hatch and MSVR have done a great job of bringing the festival atmosphere to Brands Hatch once again.